Hello and welcome to Mobility Mastery Monday. I'm Alicia and this is the place to be if you want to lose the pain, lose your fear of pain, learn to trust your body, and do what you love for life. Have you ever caught yourself falling in slow motion through midair only to go whack onto the ground, either on falling on your ass, on your thigh, maybe your shoulder? Pretty sure all of us have at some time or another experienced this soft tissue bruise. And hopefully you were doing something fun or worthwhile while doing it, but what do you do to take care of it afterwards so you don't have to be in pain for very long, can get back to your life and not worry about being injured later on due to compensation patterns? Recently, I took a little tumble like this and I landed on my left ass cheek. <laughs> And the irony here just kills me because this is the glute that I have the hardest time getting to fire. This hip is hypermobile. And of course I had to go and fall right on it and give it a nice bruise. Now, if this had happened years ago, I might have gone into a bit of like fear or protection mode wondering like, crap, should I be going home immediately to sit on a giant bag of ice? Should I be staying off you know, my feet, maybe not working out as much for the next few days? And my mind might have spiraled a little bit especially because it's this glute that doesn't want to fire about like, crap, all this work that I've been doing to get it firing, is that now gone? But instead of doing that this time, I just kind of relaxed into it. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna be just fine. And I'm actually gonna just see what my body does when I live my life as I normally would. And I ended up getting out of pain really quickly, a lot faster than I would have normally. And I want to give you the few things that I did this time that helped because it might be extremely helpful for you next time you find yourself falling and bruising some soft tissue. Now to be clear, I'm not talking about if you fall and actually end up with joint pain. That's going to be a totally different scenario. So if the bruise is only in your soft tissue and you feel like your joints are totally fine, this would apply to you. So in my first scenario where I gave you kind of my mind spiral, you might have recognized the old acronym of RICE. It, it was kind of drilled into a lot of us as kids um, and adults, you know, it's the thing to do when you're injured, which is rest, ice, compression, and elevation. But over the years, I've actually become an anti-fan of this. I don't recommend it at all, especially the ice part, um, and secondarily, the rest part. The compression and elevation are actually okay, but the first two I would eliminate altogether. So don't just take my word for it though, there are actually quite a few doctors coming out that are anti the rest and ice as well, including Dr. Nick Denubel, I hope I'm saying that right, editor-in-chief of the Physician and Sports Medicine Journal. He said, and I quote, seriously, do you actually believe your body's natural inflammatory response is a mistake? And I would totally agree with that. So does Kelly Starrett and other doctors as well. So what should we be doing instead of rest and ice? Well, first of all, this going to ice thing has to stop. And the reason is it actually stops that inflammatory process that your body is in doing its natural thing to take care of what just happened. So we actually wanna help the body do what it's already doing even better. So when I took this fall last week, I did the only two things that I'm about to tell you and I recovered extremely quickly. So. You could do the two things I'm about to tell you and add compression and elevation, but I'm not really sure you'll need to. So number one is actually get moving. It's the opposite of rest. And then number two is get your brain on the recovery train. So what do I mean by get moving? Well, I obviously don't mean, you know, get up the next day and run a marathon, unless of course you actually feel fantastic and you want to. Um, but what I actually mean is gentle movement and specifically engagement of the exact muscles and tissue that you bruised. So for example, I bruised my butt, <laughs> my glute, specifically gluteus medius and piriformis, the two things that I've worked really hard to get firing. And I just so happened to have a session the next day with my trainer. And I told him about this bruise and he worked with me on it and basically got me to gently engage those very specific muscles there. And it hurt while doing those exercises a little bit. It was just kind of contacting that bruised tissue. But by the end of the session, I would say 50% of my pain was gone. And over the next two days, it disappeared altogether. Now, what I actually take away from this is that by, you know, kind of contracting gently and engaging those tissues, we're actually pumping blood through the system, which is one of the things your body is actually trying to do with inflammation. 
Inflammation isolates an area for healing and basically tries to deliver the, the blood or the cell nutrients that your body needs to recover quickly. And gently engaging those muscles kind of tends to do the same thing and it'll flush out anything not necessary and stagnant that's kind of just hanging around there. And the other reason this is extremely helpful is that fascia has a tendency to contract really tightly upon impact or injury and it can often get stuck there um, because it's kind of stuck in a nervous system pattern of trauma and it needs help to be released. So if you gently engage those tissues immediately after you know, bruising yourself, it's kind of like telling your fascia and your nervous system that the trauma is over, everything's gonna be okay, and you want to actually use those muscles again, but you're not gonna ask too much of them yet. And this kind of brings us to number two, because what regulates that protection mechanism? The nervous system or your brain. So we wanna get your brain on the recovery train. Now, how do we do that? So if after falling, your brain is filled with thoughts like, you know, of shame for doing what you're doing, maybe you were just goofing off and doing something silly, and now you're worried that like, you won't even be able to do the activities you love anymore, or work out, or maybe you're worried about future injuries, or you know, a certain muscle not firing again. That's actually like asking your brain to produce that result for you, and that is not the result that you want. So you kind of have to contact the part of you that actually can relax into the fact that, hey, you just took a, a fall, but you're going to be just fine. So this helps calm the nervous system and actually allows for a better and faster healing process because your nervous system isn't freaking out and in trauma response. And when is the best time to do this? Well, obviously, immediately after falling is ideal. And of course, throughout the rest of that day and after. If you can immediately after falling just kind of take a breath, like not try to pretend you're okay when you're really not, acknowledge that something painful just happened, and find the place in you that believes you're going to be fine, then your nervous system can calm down and relax and you won't go through the rest of your day tightening everything up and feeling scared. I mean there are a lot of ways you can do this and maybe find what works for you, but the basic idea is to relax your nervous system and realize you're gonna be fine. Now maybe you're thinking, what about the pain of the bruise and those tissues being sore and painful if I engage them when I work out? Well, what I wanna actually say to you right now about that is it's probably okay. I don't wanna guarantee it is, but here's your clue for if it's probably a healthy response of pain rather than an unhealthy. If all you're kind of feeling is that bruised feeling a little more intensified during the activity, I would say you're fine. If, however, while doing it, you feel something else that doesn't feel right to you at all, if you feel joint pain in you know, a nearby joint, or anything else that just doesn't feel right to you, definitely stop and listen to your body and don't do it. If you're still stuck on this idea of icing because it can take the pain away a little bit, consider the very real possibility that you're only numbing the pain, dissociating yourself from what's actually happening, and delaying the healing process. So if you've recently fallen or you know someone who has, maybe share this video and they can follow these two tips of get moving and get your brain on the recovery train. And I'd love to hear if this works for you like it did for me. If you like this video, then maybe give us a thumbs up here on YouTube, share on social media. And if you want new episodes emailed directly to your inbox, you can sign up for our free newsletter at mobilitymastery.com or you can subscribe here on YouTube as well. As always, I hope you're learning to trust your body so you can adventure through life with confidence.